Hi guys, it's Troy the Full Set up here back with another video for you. Now, I've recently been uploading i3 8350K videos, which is the latest Coffee Lake processor, but I've been uploading those videos with an overclock to 5 gigahertz. Now, because I've been hitting 5 gigahertz, I've been asked a lot of questions regarding my overclock, how it's running, what overclocks that other people will be able to run with maybe lower cooling solutions. So I decided it's probably best for me to make a video, um, and I'm gonna show you sort of overclocks at 4.5 gigahertz, the 4.8 gigahertz that I think most most people will be going for and the 5 gigahertz which isn't a guarantee for everyone um, the silicon lottery will come into play there um, as always with overclocking as well you do take a risk with doing this so please don't blame me if you blow it up what I'm just going to show you in this video today really is we're going to go into the BIOS and I'm going to show you some really good voltages that you can sort of start with for each overclock and talk about the various cooling solutions you will need for each overclock as well now I, I don't think you'll need to go as far as I have with the um, cooling solution maybe for 5 gigahertz but for 4.5 and 4.8 gigahertz I think you'll be fine starting with a hyper 212 as a minimum maybe for the 4.8 moving on to 4.5 you're going to want something like a big Noctua Fantex or cryo rig air cooler anyway moving on to my test system then we have the Dymus Tech um, open air ATX test bench um, that I picked up second hand off eBay 40 pounds it's done me well absolute bargain um, but more importantly the motherboard that we're using for the processor today is the Asus Prime Z370A. Now I did have a few issues pushing this motherboard past 4.7 gigahertz until I gave it a BIOS update. Um, ever since then I've been able to do the 5 gigahertz fine but again like I said it's not a guarantee. As for the RAM we have 16 gigabytes of Corsair um, Vengeance DDR4 3200 megahertz with the LED um, and then the graphics card we have a GTX 1070 Aero um, which I've been testing on the channel we've overclocked that 100 megahertz on the core 500 megahertz on the memory if you want to see lots of gaming footage on this CPU make sure you go over to the channel um, as for the rest of the setup then we have the deep cool Maelstrom 242 AIO cooler got this for a really good bargain as well I think I paid 40 pounds for it and we've got four Cossia SP120 fans on it as well in push pull now I don't think you're going to need to go that serious and to be honest these are quiet edition fans as well so they're not super big performers anyway that's the test setup I think it's time that we get into overclocking then Okay then, so we're going to start with the 4.5 gigahertz. That's a really easy one. This this is only a 4 gigs processor. Anyway, so you want to get yourself into the BIOS, so you probably need to press the delete key as you power on the PC. Um, now we're using the Asus uh, motherboard today, so it's an Asus BIOS, but really most things that you're going to be seeing, whether it's ASRock, MSI, Gigabyte, they're going to sort of be the same, maybe just with a slightly different name, but this should take you into where you need to go. So when you um, load up any BIOS at the moment, what you'll do is be presented with this sort of home screen, which shows you loads of different bits and bobs not really a lot that you can do on it generally you can just set the XMP profile but we want to go into the advanced mode by pressing F7 I am then just going to quickly load the optimized default so I don't think you should you probably won't have to do this but I think I've still got the 5 gigahertz overclock set so we've done the F7 and then I'm going to go to AI Tweaker. So you're going to have something like o OC Tweaker, Overclock Tuner, Extreme Tuner, anything that just looks like it's a modding based thing is what you're going to need. So here we are in the AI Tweaker then. And the first thing you can see here is the Overclock Tuner. Now this you can set to XMP. So this is going to set your memory profile for overclocking your memory. Now I know the 3200 megahertz works absolutely fine. So I'm going to leave it as that. Anyone that's new to overclocking, I would suggest that maybe you sort of don't use XMP straight away. You run your memory speed at its lowest speed that you can, um, and then you can just focus purely on your CPU overclock. Make sure you've got all that stable, and then you can come back and you know increase the memory. Um, it's up to you if you want to do that. It's just a bit of advice for anyone that's new. Moving on further down then. So this is what we need to do. We need to set the CPU frequency. So here we've got the CPU core ratio that's set to sync all cores or you can do a per core overclock but we want sync all cores today and we're just going to set that to 45. So that's it. All four cores are at 4.5 gigahertz. Um, some of the motherboards it might be that you have to put in 4500 but generally 45. DRAM frequency and everything we can leave. I'm really not going to play with the settings on this today. I haven't needed to. Like load line calibration, everything you can pretty much leave to auto. Except, so that's in the Digi Plus VRAM, all this stuff. I've been absolutely fine leaving it on auto. Except, where are we? The CPU core voltage. 
Now one thing I found is a lot of people talk to me quite often about with overclocking when they only do a smooth one is they just leave the voltage to auto. Now for the 4.5 gigahertz you can leave the voltage to auto, it will boot, you can run Cinebench, you can benchmark it and it runs absolutely fine but the problem is it takes the voltage up to almost 1.3 volts which is an incredible amount of voltage for 4.5 gigahertz. So what we want to do is set the CPU core cache voltage. We're going to set that to offset mode. No, not offset, manual mode. And then we're going to set the CPU core voltage override to 1.2. That should be somewhere in the area you need. If you boot up and it, if you start and boot up and it doesn't, you add a little bit more voltage, but that should generally be a good starting voltage for 4.5 gigahertz so we're just going to do save changes so here we are in windows and one thing i wanted to show you you might see here on hardware monitor that it says i3 7300 um just to show you here here it is in hardware info so you can see we are using an i3 8350k here's my five gigs profile from earlier so you can definitely see that that is working i just don't know what's going on with the latest version of hardware monitor at the moment but anyway we're booted in we're at 4.5 gigahertz we're running ida 64 um, and as you can see we're actually slightly below that 1.2 voltage we're at 1.184 so there is definitely maybe some room to decrease the voltage so you can have some tweaks there so like i said 1.2 volts is a very good starting voltage um, and as for the temperature as well I think we're just about just under 60 degrees as well so that's um, really good and you can see my fans are actually running at a very low RPM um, I've just got the Asus turbo mode profile started so you should be absolutely fine using something like a hyper 212 Evo for 4.5 gigahertz moving on to 4.8 gigahertz then well we're gonna leave everything the same except the single cores um, you may want to try 4.7 before you go to 4.8 but you know I know that 4.8 works on this chip but you should be fine 4.8 4.9 should be what pretty much every CPU is capable of so we're gonna leave that exactly how it is just gonna go down to the voltage now I did have a little play around with the voltage um, I had a little go with 1.225 for a bit and it was okay but it wasn't perfect um, so then I went up to 1.25 which seemed to work absolutely fine without doing any tweaks whatsoever so let's go for 1.25 can save 4.8 gigahertz so let's boot up so we're all booted into Windows and here is the same screen that you're seeing from earlier. So we're at 4.8 gigahertz. So we set the 1.25 voltage um, and we're getting about 62 degrees um, on Ida64 as well. And again, we're using quite a quiet fan profile as well. The fans aren't ramping up. And again, with the voltage, like I said, we're using 1.25 volts. But as you can see here under low, it's only actually using 1.232. So you could definitely maybe lower that voltage again. So yeah, if you want to go for 4.8 gigahertz, you want to be looking in between 1.225 and 1.25 volts um, to get you there and again for the cooling um, the Hyper 212 I think may well be pushed a little bit I think if you put two fans on it it should be fine um, and remember you know you're good on these you know stress test benchmarks to go up to like the high 80s um, but yeah maybe I'd recommend just going for maybe a Notua based cooler you know it's sort of dual tower air cooler for 4.8 gigahertz anyway time to try 5 gigahertz 5 gigahertz then well going to the 5 gigs and 5 gigs plus isn't guaranteed you know the silicon lottery is gonna you know come into the equation here you may well need to delid as well i haven't had to delid my cpu um i did watch hardware unboxes review yesterday make sure you go and check that out because it's wicked as always um and he isn't able to push past 4.9 gigahertz and that was with an incredible 1.42 volts as well which is really high so we need to see if your CPU can do 5 gigahertz. A couple of things that I think will help out here. First things first, you obviously you need to see if you can post in with 5 gigahertz. And that was the first thing that I tested. So, like I said, with the first BIOS that I had, it wouldn't let me do it. I couldn't push fast 4.7. I had to take the voltage ridiculously high to even get to 4.8 or 4.9. Um, there is actually a setting in this as well. There is actually a presetting on this BIOS, so it's a five gigabyte setting as well. I just don't like to use presets. 
but um, I started my voltage at sort of like 1.3 and it just wouldn't post. Now, I wouldn't recommend that you go over 1.4 voltage all day long and especially if you are going past 1.4 volts, you need to be delidding your CPU. So I just kept sort of upping it a bit and I went to one, let's have a little go, shall we? 1.325, I think, and I think it would let me get in, but it would crash really quick. So let's just try. Oh, we're in Windows, 1.325 volts. Okay, so it didn't last very long for me in Windows at 1.325 volts. So I'm gonna show you the voltage that I use anyway. For your voltage, you are probably gonna need between 1.35 and 1.4 volts. Now, after I had the 1.325 crash the other day before I started doing my gaming videos, um, I just went, jumped straight up to 1.375 and it worked fine. Since then, I have tweaked it down a little bit and I have found that 1.36, seems to be the voltage that it likes um, which is actually the same voltage that the auto overclock sets it to as well so the auto overclock on this is actually okay now you may be able to lower that voltage a bit by having some you know more extended tweaking in the motherboard but that's not really what i wanted to show so i just wanted to show nice simple overclocks but like i said you're not always going to be able to hit five gigahertz you may well be stuck at four point uh 4.9 or 4.8 or you may find that when you are gaming that you're able to game at 5 gigahertz but when you're video editing um, and running something really stressful you're not able to um, and one thing you might want to take into consideration is this here this is the AVX um, instruction core ratio um, and what you can set here um, is you can set it slightly lower so if I just put in 3 for example Um, and as you can see up here, the target CPU at AVX frequency is now changed to 4.7 gigahertz. So that might be something to try as well. But as always, as I said, you know, it's trial and error with overclocking. I just wanted to give you some target voltages to work for. Um, any questions, please do ask. And as always with these videos, if you um, have any of your own testing of your own scores please put them in the description if you're having a bios issue if there's something going on with your ram you know and you've managed to fix it just put it in the description i really like to get the community going with these sort of overclock based videos everyone can share you know we've all got different hardware different processes different motherboards different ram so just you know share your thoughts share your feelings um, i hope you like this video make sure you um, come back to the channel on tuesday i will have the 11 game benchmark of this with the 1070 then later in the week I am going to put my i5 8400 videos early I did want to do the i3 8100 but you've all been asking me for the i5 8400 I have listened and I will have those videos for you next weekend um, thanks for watching and I'll speak to you all really soon